For over 70 years, the Chevrolet Corvette has been America's sports car, driven by astronauts, middle-aged men, and this guy. But ownership isn't all rainbows and unicorns, and today we're gonna to find out the truth based on actual experiences from Corvette owners. Imagine you get a new, at least to you, Corvette. It is a sleek, powerful American sports car. It feels like you're driving a 4th of July firecracker every time you step on the gas pedal. You know the car looks good and you figure that it takes you from a six to a nine. Surely the opposite sex will notice, but soon you realize they couldn't care less. You do get plenty of attention, but it's all by middle-aged men admiring your car. Because the Corvette outside of the newest C8 due to it looking like the offspring of a McLaren and a Lamborghini just won't get that much attention. It looks good, but just isn't considered special enough to get a ton of attention every day. Now, if you're heading over to the comments to tell me exactly how wrong I am, you might want to wait and watch the entire video because I might make you a bit angrier and I'd really hate for you to waste these strokes. Since the beginning, Corvettes have used a fiberglass body. This has some advantages with the main being it's a lightweight material versus something like sheet metal. It also can't dent. When hit, fiberglass will crack or if you hit it hard enough, it's gonna have a hole straight through it. In some generations of the Corvette, the body isn't as well reinforced in some areas, showing play when you lean on it. When I experienced a C5 Corvette after driving my 996 generation Porsche 911, it felt like a kit car in comparison. This feeling may have been magnified by the suspension modifications, but it just didn't feel quite as solid as the 911. Of course, these modifications did eventually blow the motor, so modify with care. Most Corvettes have been quite powerful for their time period. This is great if you want to do a burnout well outside of the C8, which won't let you lose enough traction to do one, even with traction control off. As Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. That is certainly the case with the Corvette, as quite a few have been wrecked when someone gave it too much gas, causing it to lose traction. Once traction is lost, most drivers aren't able to regain control before they usually hit the nearest tree. Then you get to have fun with fiberglass repair. One of the biggest nitpicks with the Corvette over the years has been the interiors. In most generations, they have been very simple and use less expensive looking materials. With much of the C4 production, GM did have an LCD cluster that for the time would have been very futuristic. It looked cool at the time, but these days those electronics tend to have plenty of issues. But cheaper looking materials abound, giving it a GM parts bin feel, even if the items aren't actually from a parts bin. With the C7, this started to improve quite a bit and the C8 is on another level. Of course, most people are paying about 100000 for a C8, so you would hope the interior feels quite a bit nicer. The Corvette has always provided plenty of horsepower for the money. So if you pay about $40,000 less for an example, that's hit depreciation. If the interior isn't top notch, then you still get to enjoy all that horsepower. This mainly affects C8 owners and to a lesser degree C7 owners. Corvettes are great performance cars, but they make a lot of them for a sports car. While the market has been hot, it will get to a point where a new C8 is actually quite affordable. Even the amazing Z06 will become much cheaper over the next few years. So those that paid well over MSRP will start to be upside down for a while if they finance their vet. You may lose money, but at least you'll have a smile every time you step on the gas. Every car has its pros and cons as well as things that can go wrong. For example, a few C8 owners have had issues with things like the dual clutch transmission. But then it is the first dual clutch transmission for a Corvette, so you expect a few issues with new technology. Even with a few issues, I was talking to an owner of a new C8 Corvette that also owns 10 Porsches at a recent Cars and Coffee. He told me that his Corvette is the best car he has ever owned. And he's owned some pretty decent 911s. The thing is, you might want a Porsche instead of Corvette, and owning a Porsche has its good side and its bad side. So check out this video to see the ugly truth about Porsche ownership. And sorry in advance about the audio editing on that one.